Hi students, welcome back to another interesting, exciting and fun-filled science class. The other day we talked about adaptations, right? Children, do you remember what is adaptation? Yes, and we also talked about the different habitats and the animals, the different animals found in all these different habitats, isn't it? So today we shall go through, okay, let us journey through the different habitats. Let us see the different kinds of plants and animals found in different habitats. <clears throat> so here, first we will uh, look through a terrestrial habitat, okay? And terrestrial habitat, you know that uh, terrestrial habitat is a habitat which is on land, okay? Not on water, not on air, but terrestrial means land. So in land, we will find like the desert, the mountains, grasslands, right? And in all these different habitats, we find different plants and animals. So let us see what kind of plants and animals we find in a desert. Here the first one, let us see a desert habitat. <coughs> Here, I'm sure you are familiar with all these plants, isn't it, students? Here, what are these called? These are cactus, or plural is cacti. Right, so the plants found in desert, see, they are so different from the plants or the trees that we find in the forest or at home. Yes, children, why? Because here, in these plants, okay, this type of plants, we don't find a normal trunk, a tree trunk, we don't find, we don't find leaves. Isn't it? Why? Let us study why they have, they don't have leaves or why they don't have the big trunks like in the forest. Here, leaves are modified into spines. Spines means the thorns. Kata kata. Yeah? So, the leaves, instead of leaves, the leaves are modified into the thorns or the spines. Why? Because you know that in a desert, water is very uh, scarce. That means water is not abundant. So they, don't, they cannot afford to lose water through the leaves, isn't it? So the desert plants, their leaves are modified into spines okay, or thorns in order to reduce transpiration. I'm sure you know that transpiration means the loss of water from the leaf surface. Even plants, they respire, okay, they perspire, they remove the excess water. So in order to reduce transpiration, that is loss of water, the leaves are modified into spines, okay? These are the adaptations of desert plants. How the desert plants are adapted? Now, the second one, photosynthesis. Children, what is photosynthesis? Yes, do you remember? Photosynthesis, in your lower classes you have already studied, photosynthesis means the process of making of food by the green plants in the presence of sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. Yes, so photosynthesis, since they don't have leaves, so it is carried out by the stems. See, the stems. The aerial part of a plant is known as the stem. So the stems carry out photosynthesis. And what else? The third adaptation of desert plants is stems are covered with thick waxy layers which helps to retain water. So the main purpose of this stem and the leaves modified to spines is to reduce loss of water. Remember that. The desert plants, they have thick, waxy layer. You just go uh, and observe a cactus. If you have a cactus at home, the covering will be very thick, yes or no? And it will be waxy, that means something like a candle, you know, waxy. So that they retain more water. So that they don't lose water, okay? So these are the adaptations the adaptations of desert plants. Leaves are modified into spines. That means the thorns. See, you can see the thorns. Yes, cactus, they are covered with thorns. 
okay, to reduce transpiration, photosynthesis is carried out by stems, not the leaves, the stems. See, the stems are all green in color, isn't it? So these green colored stems, they carry out photosynthesis. They make the food for the plant, okay? Then the stems are covered with thick waxy layers, which helps to retain water. Okay, which helps to retain water. So these are the desert plants and how they're adapted to desert, the dry place. What about the animals? Some animals, we talked about a camel the other day. Yes or no, camels, why they have long legs? They have long legs to keep their body away from the heat of the sand. Yes, but some animals like the uh, rats or the uh, snakes or other rodents and other animals, since they don't have long legs, they have to keep their body away from the heat, isn't it, during the day. So they live in burrows. Okay, burrows means a, a house in a hole. Yes, so they make holes inside, deep inside, okay, deep inside the soil. They make homes like this so that they are safe from the heat of the sand. Okay, so animals of the deserts, other than camels, they have burrows, okay? So desert animals like rats and snakes do not have long legs. They stay in burrows deep in the sand to keep away from heat. So you understand now, students, desert habitat is so different from others because there is only sand, okay? All the desert area is filled with sand and no water and the plants and animals, they adapt, okay? They adapt to this situation by all these different kinds of adaptations, all right? So next, let us see about a mountain, mountain. The other day also we talked about the mountain, okay, up in the mountain. Will it be hot or cold in the mountain, students? In the mountains, it'll be cold, right, because more air. Yes, it's very chilly in the mountain. Let us see in terrestrial habitats, the animals that we find, the plants that we find, see? These are pines, yes or no? In the mountains, usually you will find trees like this, pine trees, and they will have leaves like this, yes? And like this, yes. Why? Why they have, you know, most of the uh, trees found in the mountains are usually pine and they are cone shaped. That means sloping like a roof, yes or no? Like a roof, they have cone shaped structures. See, trees are normally cone-shaped with sloping branches. Why? Let us see. And some have needles like leaves, like this one. The leaves are like needles. Yes or no? This helps rainwater and snow to slide off easily. See? So clever. See? So clever. The plants themselves, they are shaped like a roof, sloping. So that even if the water comes, rainfall comes, even if the snow falls on them, they can, you know, easily slide, they can easily slide off their leaves and keep themselves warmer. Yes, the trees in the mountains, the trees in the mountains, sloping, if it rains, Okay, it'll slide off easily. If it snows also, it'll slide off easily because of the presence of all these sea cone shaped. All these are pointed and sloping. Yes, so that rainwater or snow can easily slide off their bodies. Okay, so those are the trees. Most of the trees found in mountains are like this. What about animals, students? What about animals? Can you tell me one mountain animal? Yes. What is this? A very majestic snow leopard. Right, snow leopard. You can see a snow leopard, the fur, fur that means the hair that they have, the thick hair they have is known as the fur, F-U-R. So the fur is so warm, right? See, the snow leopard has very thick fur, very thick hair. And even the yak. See, this yak, they have long hairs, okay? 
yaks in the mountain they have long hairs and what else uh, this is this is a yak and this is a goat okay this is a mountain goat a mountain goat will have strong hoofs hoofs means what their shoe like feet yes or no so they have the mountain goat have strong hoofs why why because rocky the mountains are rocky and in order to run up the rocky mountains they have strong hoofs and thick furs yes and this yak even this yak okay they have long hairs to keep themselves warm so they have the mountain animals they have thick skin or fur to protect them from cold yaks have long hair to keep them warm snow leopard has thick fur on its body including their feet and toes mountain goat has strong hooves for the rocky slopes okay so these mountain animals you will find that they have very thick furs okay or long hair even in the feet and in their toes they have hair like socks okay to keep themselves from cold now let us see a grassland a grassland is also a terrestrial habitat okay grassland yes a grassland you know children a grassland is a place where there are only you know short shrubs and you know uh, short trees only short plants that is a grassland so in a grassland see this lion a lion lives in the grassland as well as in the forest okay mostly you will find them the tigers and lions in the grassland and look carefully look carefully at this lion they have eyes in front of their face okay in the front the lions have eyes in the front lions have eyes in front of the face to allow it to have a correct idea about the location of its prey what is a prey a prey means the animals to eat you know that animals like lions and tigers are carnivores right they feed on flesh they feed on other animals like cattle cow buffalo or deer and so on so they have to have uh you know sharp eyes they have to have eyes in front of them so that they can have a clear idea they have to see where their prey are okay that means the prey means the animals to eat or the victims okay so animals like lions lions have eyes in front of the face to allow it to have a correct idea about the location of its prey then what about this this is a deer look closely okay students a deer has eyes on the side of their head not in the front like the lions okay do you notice that yes see tears have eyes on the sides of their head why why they have eyes on the sides tears have eyes on the sides of their head to allow it to look in all directions for dangers yes when you have eyes on the side then you can you know look left and right front also so that they can uh, you know look out for dangers if there are any lions or tigers around right the speed of the deer helps them to run away from predators and you know that deers are very swift they are very fast runners yes or no so why why deers are fast runner to keep themselves away from predators repeat after me predators what are predators predators are animals who hunt for prey once more predators are those animals which hunts for other animals to eat like a lion a tiger they are predators because they hunt for other animals okay so deers like i said deers they have eyes on the side of the head so that they can you know keep away they can look in all the directions okay left right you know front back they can look in all the directions for their enemies for dangers also tears are very fast so that they can run away from their predators all right so these are adaptations 
These are adaptations of these kind of animals in a grassland. Okay? Then we have, let us look at aquatic habitat. Aqua means, yes, the other class I told you, aqua means water. So let us have a look at aquatic habitats. Here, a fish. You can see a fish. Yes? And the shape of a fish is streamlined. See, it is mo moving in the water. How it is moving? The shape of their body allows them to move inside the water. That means fishes have streamlined body like this. See, fishes have a streamlined body and they have fins. See, these small parts are known as fins, like their feet and hands like us. They have fins, okay? And they have scales, right? They have scales on their body. Okay, so that, you know, they can move easily. And these fins and the tails, the other day I told you that it helps them to change the direction. Change the direction of their movement. So fishes have streamlined body. In order to adapt themselves to water, they have fins and scales. All right, and what else, children? See, gills, the red complex structures that you can see, you know, on the side of the head, they are known as gills. For what? They don't have lungs for breathing, okay? Students, they have gills so that they can breathe the oxygen which is dissolved in water, all right? So fishes are adapted to water in this way. Now, what about other fish like a dolphin? This is a dolphin, right? So see, can you see this hole at the top of the head? What is this? This is a blowhole. Okay, a blowhole enables them to breathe. Okay, when they come to the surface, the blowhole allows them to breathe the fresh air. Okay, so these are adaptations of aquatic animals, like the fishes and the dolphins. All right? Then let us see aquatic plants. Have you seen this anywhere? It is a bone filled with lotus flowers. Yes, you can see the lotus leaves flat, flowing in the water. You can see this water lily floating in the water. Right, then, see, here, mostly, uh, you know, like in bones and legs. That means in a little shallow water, aquatic, uh, aquatic bodies also, there are lots. You have rivers, bones, legs, oceans, seas. Yes or no? So here, uh, the one that I'm showing you is a bones and legs plants. So usually their body, their stem will be hollow. Okay? Have you ever seen this water lily? You just take out one and see their body, okay, will be hollow so that it will be light, okay? And uh, the leaves are flat so that they can float in water. Okay, and in, uh, in aquatic plants, in most aquatic plants, the roots are only to keep, you know, uh, actually roots are for conduct of um, minerals and water, right? But in aquatic plants, it is usually to keep the plant in place, in one place so that they don't flow, okay? Now, say in deep water, like in the oceans and in the sea, you have this, okay? They are, the leaves are mostly ribbon, like flat, and ribbon like and they're mostly divided so that water can easily pass through them and that way the leaves will not be destroyed isn't it so mostly the underwater plants they have ribbon like leaves very flat and flowing so that they can flow in the direction of the water and that they don't get destroyed by the current of the water right see this yes like ribbons isn't it why they have ribbons? You know, roots are reduced in size and main function is to hold the plant in place, okay? Like I said, the stems are long, hollow, and light. Submerged plants have, that means underwater plants, okay? Submerged that are inside the water have narrow and thin ribbon-like leaves that can bend in flowing water. Some leaves are highly divided so water can flow through them without damaging them. These are aquatic plants. Then we have 
you can see a frog, right? A frog, they have webbed feet. See, you know that a frog can live both in land and in water, and they have webbed feet that allows them to swim in water, okay? And they can jump, right? And so, students, these are some of the plants and animals that is found in different habitats. Remember all the different types of adaptations in deserts and in mountains, how they can live, survive in all these different habitats we have talked about today. So keep all these things in mind, students, and until the next class, take care and bye-bye.